Hey everybody, Coach Lance from OnlineHockeyTraining.com and the question of the day is, do you know your hockey window? <clears throat> what? Come again? Do you know your hockey window? We don't know. Start talking. Dictionary.com defines window as an opening in the wall of a building, the side of a vehicle, etc. for the admission of air or light or both commonly fitted with a frame in which are set movable sashes containing panes of glass. But I'm not here to talk about a physical window. I'm here to talk about your hockey window. Do you know what yours is? If you're a player who after the season is over, your hockey bag goes into storage till the following season, you're just a recreational hockey player which is awesome but the rest of the video probably won't interest you but thanks for stopping by but if you have lofty goals to one day play major junior college hockey in the Olympics or professionally you need to hear this because as I speak your hockey window is slowly getting smaller and smaller as every second ticks away you see if you're chasing something on this scale this journey doesn't last forever and unfortunately has an expiration date let me explain once your parents lace up your skates for the first time your hockey window clock starts. Everyone's clock begins at the same time, but when the final buzzer sounds for each individual player varies greatly. Some players' window closes quickly, within the first year or two of playing. They try the sport out for a season or two and decide hockey's just not for them. Others string a number of years together, playing all the levels of youth hockey, before they hang up their skates for the final time, usually during a player's mid-teen years. The last group of players is by far the smallest of the three, is populated by players who get to play well into their 20s and 30s before their final lap presents itself. So how do you crunch the numbers and calculate what your hockey window is? If you're a male who wants to play college hockey or maybe your junior, the magic number is 20. If you're a female, the window is even smaller and your magic number is 18. 20 and 18 represent the age you'll be down the road and if you don't have a college hockey coach offering you an opportunity to get a free education and continue your hockey journey, well, that's the moment in time when the third wave of hockey careers are extinguished. Now math never came easy for me, but even I can figure out this equation. If you're a male player, take the number 20 minus your current age and that's your hockey window. If you're a female player, the window is shorter as you start with 18, minus your current age and that's your hockey window. So let's say you're a male player who's 12 years old and wants to play college hockey. Your window to reach your objective is eight years. So what's going to separate you from all the other players competing for one of those prize positions? If you look at the masses, most hockey players do exactly the same things. They play their winter season, maybe a little AAA hockey in the spring, a summer clinic a couple days a week, a pre-tryout prep camp in the fall, and repeat. The players that go on to play into their 20s have figured out how to distance themselves from the crowd by doing what I call extras. Extras are the additions to the normal winter, spring, summer, and fall regular routine. It's waking up early before school to work with a technical skating and skills instructor. It's the extra hours spent in the weight room developing your strength, power, flexibility, and endurance. It's all the time spent on educating themselves on nutrition, eating the right things in order to optimize performance and recovery. It's the little things that tip the scale for some because of their willingness to do more, like hand-eye coordination activities as well as balance and multitasking drills. It's the extra hours spent on the pond or outdoor rink. And finally, the hundreds, or more like thousands of hours spent doing off-ice stick handling and shooting in your garage basement or backyard. In a nutshell, players that earn college hockey scholarships or major junior roster spots do more extras a lot more than everyone else you see all this is is a race a race to see who can learn more and do more than most in their hockey window and now you know what yours is I can't give you expert advice on how to get stronger or put together a nutritional strategy but what I can help you with is how to improve these you see coaches and off by stick handling and shooting specialists and have been training players just like you or your son or daughter here here at my facility in Minnesota for over a decade. Now I know there's someone out there that's saying, Coach, I like what you're saying, would love to work with you, but I don't live in Minnesota. Sounds like a problemo to me. You couldn't be more wrong. You see, Coach has got you covered, because not only do I train players, but I also own the largest database of off by stick handling and shooting drills on the planet. Now that I think about it, probably in the whole universe. If you're looking for guidance on how to possess the puck better and generate more scoring chances in games, look no further as I'm your guy. 
What I've done is given every player around the world the opportunity to tap into Pandora's box of elite stick skill development. When you become an online hockey training member, you'll be able to access pre-built practice plans that will guide you down my proven off by stick handling and shooting path like thousands of players have followed before you. Just head on over to OnlineHockeyTraining.com where you can learn more about what I do and how I can help you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.